Hey, welcome back to YT Finance, and this is the channel where I went to business school so you didn't need to, and today we are talking about the best and the most recent stock market news updates that investors need to know about. So with that being said, go ahead and annihilate that like button right now, subscribe if you are new, comment down below your thoughts about any or all of these stories, and with that being said, let's get right into it. Recently, all the three major indexes have increased, which would include the NASDAQ, the S&P 500, as well as the Dow Jones. And you should also be aware that the S&P 500 specifically has posted a new record high despite pulling back recently. So investors are riding the wave of this momentum and I anticipate that this momentum will continue throughout the year of 2024. For me personally, I like to invest into the stock market on a weekly basis, which means that every single week I am investing into my favorite ETFs and stock market indexes. I prefer to use the investing strategy of dollar cost averaging into the stock market and that has led to substantial returns for myself, and if you want to see those returns, feel free to look up our recent portfolio update. But right now, let's talk about some pressing stock market news, starting off with Google. Google is owned by a parent company named Alphabet, ticker symbol G-O-O-G, -O or ticker symbol G-O-O-G-L, and recently, Google, which is a technology giant, announced that it's pausing its AI tool's ability to generate images of people. For context, this AI tool is named Gemini, and users recently discovered that this tool was creating historically inaccurate images of various races and genders for things such as Vikings, the Pope, World War II, and many other things. This tool has literally made German soldiers come out to be African American, or they would depict the Pope as a woman, and clearly this is historically inaccurate. Since this controversy arose, Google then apologized, saying that Gemini missed the mark, and they promised to release an improved version of the tool soon, but in the meantime, this is going to weigh on the company's share price as well as the company's public image, so I'd love to hear your thoughts about this down below. Next up in macroeconomic news, we have an anonymous whistleblower that gave the world details on the Chinese government's cyber espionage efforts. Recently, hundreds of credible pages were posted to GitHub, which detailed how officials in China are hiring private sector hackers. These hackers are being used to spy or disrupt societies both domestically and abroad. And this is fueling a lively cyber spying marketplace over in China. And this is very bad news for the FBI, considering that China's hackers would outnumber the FBI's cyber intelligence group by around 50 to one. That means for every one person that that the FBI has, China literally has 50 people that do a similar or better job. I actually think this could fuel cybersecurity stocks to go even higher because cybersecurity is a main concern right now, especially as the world becomes more technologically advanced. If you recall from previous news updates, you would actually know that cybersecurity stocks are actually trending downwards in their share prices. But because of this recent news, I believe they will start to make a comeback. Next, let's talk about some IPO news in regards to Reddit, which we touched on yesterday. It was recently released that Reddit will trade under ticker symbol RDDT, and they are going to be one of the first major social media companies going public since Pinterest back in 2019. In yesterday's video, we never gave a hard date on when Reddit will actually have their IPO, but recently it's come out that they plan to have an IPO literally next month, so this is going to be great news, and I'm going to be watching this IPO like a hawk. So if you want more updates on the Reddit IPO, which I believe will go parabolic in their share price, go ahead and annihilate that like button right now, subscribe to the channel for more updates, and I would love to hear your comments down below. But first, let's move on to our next story. You should also be aware that Starbucks is trending downwards in their share price, which gives investors a fantastic buying opportunity right now. Starbucks owns a very large coffee chain, and I think they are a very good stock to hold in your portfolio. But why are they downtrending in their current share price? Well, let's talk about it. Recently, Starbucks Workers United had its largest day of signups since 2021 after over 400 employees employees at 21 different stores filed to join the union on Tuesday. Therefore, the tensions are high between Starbucks and their employees, which are unionized. Essentially, the employees will use the union to argue with Starbucks for more hours and better wages, which will weigh on Starbucks' future bottom line. However, I personally am using this as a buying opportunity into this company because fundamentally they are a very successful company and I believe that they have a lot of growth still ahead of them, so I'd love to hear your thoughts about this down below. 
next up in the news, we have Palantir Technologies, ticker symbol PLTR, which is a big data and analytics company which serves both commercial enterprises as well as government agencies. Palantir is currently trading for around $22.97, while some authors believe this company could literally surge up to $30 per share. And not just authors believe this, but also some stock experts, analysts, and financial reporters would back this number. However, for me personally, I think they are rather high in their share price right now, even though I absolutely love this company. Currently, Palantir Technologies is firing on all four cylinders right now, and it seems that nothing can stop their current growth momentum. However, you should be aware that Palantir's current share price could be overvalued right now, which means that there is reason to believe that this company could experience a large pullback. But despite this, the long-term growth trajectory of this company is very positive, and in the meantime, you just need to ensure that you buy this company at a cheap price. Like we talked about before, the best upcoming catalyst for this company would be their ability to join the S&P 500 index in the next few months. This will obviously act as a positive catalyst for this company, and it will also ensure that more money flows into this company, which should increase their share price. However, here's the bad news. Right now, we have experienced great growth momentum in the general stock market, which is lifting the majority of stocks in the stock market, including Palantir. But as soon as the stock market changes direction, this could be catastrophic for Palantir shares in the short term. You should also know that Palantir is trading at around 70 times their forward earnings, which makes this company very expensive right now, so them lowering in their share price may not be a bad thing, because I personally think it would give investors a better buying opportunity into this phenomenal company. Therefore, as soon as investors sense some weakness in the general stock market, Palantir shares are going to start trending downwards. However, you should be aware that I personally love Palantir Technologies, I have them in my personal portfolio, but I'd like to buy this company as cheap as possible. Aside from their current valuation, there is really nothing stopping Palantir from growing over the long term, so I'd love to hear your thoughts down below about Palantir Technologies. In other news, let's talk about an electric vehicle company named Rivian, which is an electric vehicle startup company which is most notably known for their contract with Amazon and the fact that they make very cool looking trucks. Recently, Rivian has been hit hard with a downgrade in their share price, to where one analyst cut his price target from $24 per share down to just $8 per share. So let's talk about why he did that. The first reason for this price prediction downgrade is due to the company's less than impressive quarter for earnings report, which disappointed investors and analysts. This is why the UBS analyst not only decreased his price target for this company, but he also lowered the rating on this company from a buy rating down to a sell rating. For some background knowledge, Wall Street analysts normally cut ratings by one notch at a time to where they would go from a buy rating down to a hold rating and then a hold rating down to a sell rating. But what was really catastrophic about this is that this analyst decreased the rating from a buy rating and he decreased decreased them two notches all the way down to a sell rating, and investors are acting appropriately to this negative news. According to the article, demand growth for electric vehicles in the United States is slowing down due to the prices of these electric vehicles. For instance, the Rivian R1S SUV starts at about $75,000, which clearly puts it out of the budget range of your average American. This in turn caused the share price of Rivian to drop by around 10.4% down to $10.26 per share. But the news gets even worse, because after their quarter four earnings results, which disappointed investors and analysts, on top of an analyst downgrade, another analyst from JP Morgan also downgraded the company from $20 for his price target to a price prediction of $11 per share. On top of that, he also lowered his rating from a buy rating down to a hold rating, so this has been catastrophic for Rivian shareholders. However, there is some hope here, because around 57% of analysts who cover Rivian stock maintain a buy rating on this company. You should also be aware that the average analyst price target for Rivian stock is around $19.30 per share, which is substantially higher than their current share price of $10.26 per share. So I'd love to hear your thoughts down below about this startup electric vehicle company and if you hold them in your portfolio. Next up, let's talk about Tesla, ticker symbol TSLA, which is another electric vehicle company which specializes in artificial intelligence, energy storage, as well as energy generation. Tesla has promised investors to release a $25,000 electric vehicle in the United States in the year of 2025, and the code name for this Tesla car is named the Model 2 Redwood. But it seems that another electric vehicle company has actually beaten Tesla to this price point already, and this would be none other than a Chinese EV brand. According to the statistics, this other Chinese company has a better design, cost, and charging speed than Tesla. 
The only thing Tesla has an advantage in is their range. So let's dive into the details to see how the competition in this electric vehicle space is heating up. For starters, I love Tesla and I personally hold them in my portfolio and I can't wait for them to release their codenamed Redwood electric vehicle, which is the Tesla Model 2 in 2025. The Redwood has been described as a compact crossover, which means it's going to be slightly smaller than the Model 3 and the Model Y in overall size. But the greatest selling point of this electric vehicle is going to be its cheap price of around $25,000. But it seems that Chinese EV makers are already ahead of the curve, considering that Geely Automobile Holdings Limited recently released their Galaxy E8, and if you look on screen here, you can see their vehicle and it looks phenomenal. In my opinion, this car has great curves, it's sleek, and it has a very cheap price point, and even the interior is extremely futuristic. We even have a chart here on screen which directly compares the Galaxy E8 to the Tesla Model 3 in regards to its specifications. And as you can see here, Tesla's only real advantage is in regards to their range, but certainly not their price or even the vehicle's speed, which is shocking for a Tesla. What makes things worse for Tesla is that the reason the Galaxy E8 has a lower range than Tesla's Model 3 is because the E8 is actually a slightly larger vehicle. Elon Musk himself, who is the CEO of Tesla, even released this statement saying this, and I quote, the Chinese car companies are the most competitive car companies in the world. So I think they will have significant success outside of China, depending on what kind of tariffs or trade barriers are established. He goes on to say, Frankly, I think if there are not trade barriers established, they will pretty much demolish most other companies in the world. Essentially, this is Elon Musk himself saying that these Chinese EV makers are no joke. And this one company is not the only exception. There are other Chinese EV makers that are just as competitive as you can see here on screen. Now, I'll say the main advantage that Tesla has here is that they are an American company. So if you are patriotic, then clearly go with Tesla but it seems that the EV market is heating up in regards to the competition, and here's more information on that. We already see Chinese brands such as NIO setting up factories over in the European Union, which is literally happening right now, so they are already infiltrating Western societies. As a result of all this, Tesla is feeling the competition from these Chinese EV makers, but still I am extremely excited for that $25,000 Tesla electric vehicle which will be released in 2025. So I'd love to hear your thoughts about this whole development and this entire story down below in the comments. Next up, let's talk about the e-commerce giant, which is none other than Amazon, ticker symbol A-M-Z-N, and I love this company and I hold them in my personal portfolio. The reason why Amazon is in the news today is because their former CEO, who is Jeff Bezos, recently sold off a large amount of Amazon stock. According to the article, over the last several weeks, Jeff Bezos has sold a substantial amount of Amazon stock. To put this into perspective, the Amazon founder literally sold 14 million shares of this company, which amounted to around $2.37 billion, billion with a B, which is an extraordinary amount of money. However, it gets even more interesting because if we tally up all his rounds of sales, he would have sold nearly 36 million Amazon shares overall, which would equate to around $6.15 billion. So what does this mean for Amazon investors? Is this good news? Is this bad news? or does it not really matter? Well, I'll tell you. First, we need to remember that Jeff Bezos' net worth is around $195.5 billion, in which his ownership of Amazon stock literally has propelled him to this level of wealth. Therefore, his selling isn't really anything to bat an eye against, considering that he still owns a large portion of this company. We also have to remember that this is all a part of a pre-arranged trading plan, in which Jeff Bezos could sell a maximum of 50 million shares of Amazon stock by January 25th of of next year. And so far, the four rounds of sales this month all have fallen under that plan. So this is completely legal and it's really nothing to write home about. At the end of the day, this is just a CEO or shareholder cashing in some of their shares, but he still owns a large amount of this company and the things that he has sold were literally a part of a pre-arranged plan. So there's nothing intrinsically wrong with Amazon right now. Jeff Bezos just wanted some more cash on hand. So I'd love to hear your thoughts about this company down below and tell me whether or not you hold Amazon on in your portfolio, because I certainly do. Next up, we have a Union Pacific in the news, which is another industrial company which I hold in my portfolio. Union Pacific, ticker symbol UNP, jumped by around 4.2%, marking its biggest gain among the large cap industrial stocks. 
For context, this is a railroad company, and they are a part of the Industrial Select Spider ETF, ticker symbol XLI. Out of the 11 top holdings of this ETF, you should know that Union Pacific posted the most impressive gains recently, while RTX, formerly known as Raytheon, and Boeing have fallen in their overall share prices. For me personally, this is not one of my favorite ETFs, but I am excited that Union Pacific, which is a freight railroad company, is doing quite well. Other companies that I like in the top holdings of this ETF would be Honeywell International, Lockheed Martin, and a few others. Union Pacific specifically is a very stable company, and I am glad that they are in my personal portfolio. However, you should be aware that Boeing stock is trending lower right now, and I'm also buying that company. Analysts have even recently downgraded Boeing's BA stock due to their uncertain future outlook. And at the same time, according to Bloomberg, United Airlines, which is a company I hold in my portfolio, ticker symbol UAL, is actually seeking to replace some of its Boeing orders with planes from Airbus. And if you didn't know, Boeing and Airbus are rivals, so I'd love to hear your thoughts down below about Boeing. Lastly, let's talk about some quick news updates before we go, starting off with Mercado Libre, which recently released results, which we talked about yesterday, but since then, they dropped by around 10% in their share price. Likewise, Warner Bros. also plunged by around 10% in their share price after analysts' estimates on both their earnings and revenue missed for fourth quarter results. For stocks that are in the Dow Jones Index, Salesforce, ticker symbol CRM, dipped by 0.3%, while Cisco Systems actually rose by 0.6%, which is pretty interesting. But when we go outside of the Dow, Carvana, ticker symbol CNVA, gapped up by around 32%, which is quite impressive. We also covered Block yesterday, and now they surged by around 16% in their share price. You should also be aware that Kathy Wood of ARK Invest is actually adding Block to multiple ETFs that the company holds, which would include their ARKF, their ARKK, and ARKW ETFs. Lastly, Booking.com plunged by more than 10% in their share price after investors found out that their sales and earnings decelerated for the third straight quarter. So honestly, this decline in their share price was warranted. And with that being said, go ahead and annihilate that like button right now. Subscribe if you are new, comment down below your thoughts about any or all of these stories, and with that being said, I will see you in the next YT video.